version 1.9 of Decal Machine, reintroduces the ability to bake decals to their parent objects, as a means of export. Like everything else since Decal Machine 1.8, baking has been completely redone, and as a result is now much easier to use and more robust. Despite this, I want to emphasize that baking, by its nature, is a flawed process. It's quite slow, especially at high resolutions, which is what you will need, to get even close to the visual quality of mesh decals, even for relatively simple assets. Also, Blender doesn't support anti-aliasing for baking, and the way decal machine gets around this, is via super sampling, which means baking at double or quadruple the intended resolution. This will then of course slow down the process noticeably. Furthermore, there is a bug or problem with Blender, requiring a workaround involving a temporary solidify modifier, to properly bake decals. Until this issue is fixed, we can't use a cage for baking. And unfortunately, using a cage may in turn be the solution to another issue, which I'll demonstrate in the later part of this video, and which remains unresolved for now, with the only solution being, painting out troublesome areas. Unlike in earlier versions of Decal Machine, baking decals no longer requires any prep work. With the exception of having UV coordinates on the parent objects of course. So, this is just a simple cube, with decals thrown on it. The decals are parented to the cube, which happens automatically when you insert a decal, or reapply it. To now bake those decals to their parent cube, bring up the new decal export panel. Make sure you are in bake mode, not in atlas mode, which will arrive in decal machine 2.0. You then want to select the cube. There is no need to select the decals, but you may want to make sure they are all parented properly. The properties should be self-explanatory for the most part. You can choose anti-aliasing, resolution, samples, margin and ray distance. You can link the X and Y resolutions to easily create square textures. I'd recommend to leave margin and ray distance as they are, but you can drop samples to one, especially when testing. This will decrease render times a lot. For convenience there is a triangulate option, enable it, and a triangulate modifier will be added once you bake. This is highly recommended to do when you have end gons on your model, like I have here. A better approach would be to do it yourself, in advance however. Changing the triangulation, can produce undesired intersections due to the close proximity of the decals. Taking care of this in advance, maybe even on the mesh level, gives you more control. Next, there are the map types to bake. They are based on the existing textures of the decal assets. You can bake color maps from info decals, and you can bake normal, ambient occlusion, curvature and height, from simple, subset and panel decals. Masks are useful as well. Finally, you can choose what to do after the baking has finished. Previewing bakes, will hide all decals and apply a temporary preview material with the map types you've chosen set up. You have the option to open the location of the bakes in your file browser as well. And you can name your bakes in a way, that allows Substance Painter to assign them automatically. When you're ready, just hit the bake button. Watch the terminal for progress, if you want. There are a few support bakes, which are always going to be baked and which will be removed again at the end. Notice how flat the finished bakes are. That's because they are only decal bakes. They don't contain any information about the parent object. And if you are using a high to low poly workflow, you will have to combine your baked normals with the decal normals, or the baked ambient occlusion with the decal ambient occlusion, etc. The bakes should look pretty good for the most part, despite the low samples used. However, you want to increase the samples if you see pixelation like this, usually only for decals with very fine detail. Going back to Blender, you can see how the bakes are previewed now, and how the decal objects have been hidden. Notice how some decals, aren't overlapping properly. Notice also, how there's a new button in the export panel now. You can easily get rid of the preview materials, and unhide the decals again by pressing the Restore Materials Plus Decals button. And when you do this, you can really see the resolution benefits mesh decals offer. To fix the overlaps, you need to curiously invert the height situation. This is best done in solid shading, as it shows the true height, unlike EV with alpha blended decals. What should be on top, needs to be at the bottom. If you don't want to do this in solid shading, you can also do it in EV, but you should use hashed alpha for all overlapping decals in that case. It's not quite clear why this is required, 
it may have to do with the fact that decals are baked, from the outside in, as opposed to from the inside out, as you normally do. But it's just something you have to do, when you have overlapping decals. I'm increasing the samples to 32 now, which is probably the most you will ever have to use. The previous bake, at one sample, took just 8 seconds by the way. Twenty seconds, now with thirty-two samples. The pixelated curvature information on the troubled decals from earlier, look much better now. But this is probably the best you can make it look, without increasing the resolution. You can also already see, how the overlaps are working properly now. Understand that the parallax is gone. While the decal's height maps driving the parallax, have been baked here, the shader effect itself, based on my experience, works best on walls or decals, as opposed to manifold objects with multiple UV islands, like this one. Finally, let's do another bake, this time at 2K and with anti-aliasing. As mentioned before, this will actually bake at 4K, and will then be scaled down to 2K afterwards. Jumping ahead, you can see the result here. Pretty nice. The original object had three materials, so to replicate them, there are now three preview materials as well. This is how each shader graph looks, after all four map types have been baked. You can check out individual bakes on the model, by selecting its node and switching to flat solid shading. Works best if you don't have multiple materials on the model though. Note, that it's only ambient occlusion, color, normals and the subset mask, that is used for previewing. And one last time, let's restore the original materials and decals. This was a simple example, so let's now look at a more complex one. This object was never built to be baked, and perhaps because of that, it's a good example to point out an unresolved issue, you may run into as well. First however, note that this asset consists of four separate objects, all sharing a single UV sheet. With multiple objects in your selection, you will have the option to combine bakes. If checked, all four objects will still be baked individually, one after the other, but at the end a single texture set encompassing the UVs of all four objects will be created. And by the way, it's a good idea to have all mirror modifiers on your main objects disabled. Before I bake this, I'm checking the overlaps, just like in the earlier example. Now, let's do a first test bake with one sample. Jumping ahead a bit, here is the result. As you can see, all four objects have been baked, and there is a fifth, combined texture set. Again, this could likely be smoothed out a bit with more samples, and definitely with more resolution. The color map shown here, is displayed on a black background but it's actually the only map type that uses the alpha channel. If you are used to working with normal maps, you will notice how some of the colors here are off, and this is the unresolved issue I've mentioned before. The important parts look good though. Back to the preview on the model. Overall, it looks pretty good. Here's an overlap I've yet to fix. This could be in part due to the low sample setting I have used, but the resolution will definitely have to be increased as well, for this to be readable. And it's the same here. These are still decals, I haven't actually baked those objects. 
on the insides of these cylindrical holes, you can see the unresolved issue I was talking about. There are situations where decals bake through, to surfaces that don't have decals themselves. And lowering the ray distance to fix this, seems to have no effect. So if you are getting this, you are stuck, and will have to paint it out, which luckily isn't very hard, since the decal bakes are so flat. It's in here as well. It literally baked through from the top. A cage may help to solve this, but as I mentioned, as long as the solidify issue isn't fixed, it doesn't look like that can be done. The same issue appears here. Here's a warning, resetting the materials has a bit of a tendency to crash Blender. This is likely related to ongoing issues with keeping track of user counts in Blender's data blocks. Or maybe it's related to recent issues with EV and material slots. Whatever it is, if you want to make sure you keep the bake previews, you should save. Although nothing of importance would be lost, if you don't save and Blender crashes, since the bakes are finished already. I'm correcting the overlap here, and will then bake again at final quality to conclude this demo. Let's do 4K, with anti-aliasing at 2 and using 32 samples. Again, I'm jumping ahead. This one took one and a half hours for me. If you are into baking, it'll probably be faster for you. I'm just rendering on a laptop here. You can see, how the 8K bakes are now being resampled to 4K. And here it is. Small text can actually be read, for the most part. But these bake-through issues are of course still present. The distortion you can see in those nuts, is due to me not triangulating this part. And for the last time, let's reset the materials and get back the decals. <laughs> 